Hey everybody, welcome back to this modern building creation series. It's not really a series per se, but I like to pretend that there's a little bit of a continuity going on here. And in this second build, I'm going to be working on another Dutch-inspired modern skyscraper building. But before I head into this whole time-lapse and explain how I'm doing everything, just going to kind of run that in the background and talk about something which is perhaps a little bit of an elephant in the room right now, which I definitely need to address. And that is the fact that I am not using glass in this video, but somehow, by miracle, it has been announced by Frontier that they're adding it into the game. And that announcement was a few days ago. The update is gonna come a few days in the future, as I'm speaking right now. And I built this building a few weeks ago. Now, initially when I started this series, it was something that I wanted to do for a super long time, like I believe I've said in the first episode. It's something that I always wanted to do, I just was kind of hoping that Frontier would maybe add actual glass into the game, and at some point I just kind of lost all of that hope. Decided to just make this series anyway, and just settle with the uh, art primitives, because at this point I pretty much gave up all my hope that Frontier would add glass into the game. Although, at the same time, it was also perhaps a little bit of a jab, since... Um, I, I still wanted that sweet glass, so recently I've just been kind of shit posting on Twitter about, like, I don't know, posting Minecraft pictures of Minecraft having glass and being like, gee, I wish every game had this kind of thing. Uh, and I don't know if my, if my shit posting worked or if Frontier was just being cheeky behind the scenes the entire time. But we've got glass in the game and it's coming in a few days. So, normally I know I don't talk too much about the updates, but I am just too goddamn excited about this edition not to talk about it in this series, and obviously it's also kind of relevant because this series would be a lot better were there actually glass in the game. So, bef because this building is made before the update is coming out and how we don't even know what this glass is going to look like at the moment, it is still using all of these wall pieces and kind of tricks to try and make everything look a little bit glossy, but I have to say, if it is in the game and if it's feasible, I would love to revisit these buildings, add actual glass to them, and actually do a little bit more in this series, because so far it's just been a little bit of an experiment to see to what extent you can really, you know, make modern buildings in Planet Coaster, even though the game is not supposed to be, you know, for modern buildings whatsoever. But I think with the newest updates, there's a big shift in that, and I think the fact that the update is called the Studio Updates, and that they're adding all of these studio features I think means that they're definitely going to add a lot of versatile elements into the game and things which can be used not just for modern buildings but also backstage areas in theme parks or if you want to make a Disney or Universal style uh, studio park. So yeah I'm definitely excited about this update even if it doesn't really seem like a traditional typical theme park theme I think it's a lot more versatile and flexible than that. Now <laughs> to leave that intro behind and actually go into the actual building process, which has been going on for a while now already, I guess. This building is mostly inspired, again, by modern Dutch architecture, mostly Rotterdam. Uh, it's not much of a secret that I always lurk on places like Skyscraper City and just kind of check out all the developments. I don't really have much to offer there. I'm not particularly knowledged, and I don't really follow these kinds of things too much in real life. But I think it's a super interesting topic, and so uh, it, it's something that I really like and I've barely ever done in Planet Coaster. And this one in particular, this tower in particular, was mostly inspired by the Zomhaven in Rotterdam, which is a new apartment building which they're hopefully going to start building this year, which is planned to be the tallest building in the Netherlands. With just over 200 meters, it's actually not that tall, but for the Netherlands it's quite a big deal. So uh, that thing's been on my mind quite a bit, and the basic structure of this tower was a little bit inspired by it. It's got a similar color scheme and similar balconies, etc. Although, I would say this building is very different in a sense that it has a very very definite front and back. So right here, where the crown sort of has this curving rim of glass facing towards whatever side it's facing towards, is definitely the front of the building, and they've got some definite sides, and the back side as well, which the tower that this is inspired by doesn't have at all. In fact, the crown is really different. It's much more of a uh, 
well, Empire State-ish or uh, Entity Docomo Building-ish uh, Spire. But obviously I didn't want to do the exact same thing, so I decided to go for something just slightly different. It's also, I believe, uh, a bit of an interesting building in the sense that it's not going to actually be that tall at all. Most of the buildings in this park will be under 100 meters tall, and so this one is going to be 96 meters, give or take. Which is really, yeah, that's kind of short. And I'm trying to make this as tall as possible by just making, you know, all of these recognizable balconies. And in, in general, I feel like residential towers end up looking a little bit more tall than office towers. Just because they have all of this detailing on the outside. And, uh... This one, I think, with about 3.5 meter floors. I think that's what I went for. It could have been 3.75. But in any case, floors that are way lower than 4 meters. This ends up being a quite tall looking building with a lot of floors. And yet it's just underneath 100 meters tall. Now most of the tower I've divided into floors that should have about 2 or 4 apartments. Should probably be about 4, but then it would be four small apartments, either that or two large ones. I'm not entirely sure actually how it should be split. I believe I went for four in the end, since near the end of the e of this episode I'll be splitting the balconies in half by placing a fence in the middle. Um, but aside from those traditional typical apartments throughout the entire tower, the crown has some, uh, some apartments in it. And yeah, well yeah, they're definitely penthouses, they're pretty huge. And it's just one penthouse per floor, and then you've got these awesome large windows right there on the front where there should be really amazing views of the imaginary city that this might be located in. I'm not entirely sure what I would place this in, but uh, that's really the general idea. So in a sense, I kind of designed it more with the idea of the apartments inside in mind rather than the look that it would have from the outside and so I'm not the hugest fan of the way that this building looks uh, but I'm I'm still kind of okay with it. It's, it's alright I suppose although I do have to say personally I do slightly prefer the design of the building which I made in the last episode of this which you can see right next to this. By the way the reason that I am building this with the other one next to it is to just kind of keep it in scale. I'm trying to not make it out of scale with the other building since I might. And I have to emphasize might here because uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm actually going to do this, but I might make a city or at least a small neighborhood out of these buildings if I end up making enough of them. I think that would be a really interesting experiment and not many people have tried building a city in Planet Coaster yet. And it's really something which I feel you could try. You know, compared to City Skylines, you obviously can't make an entire city. And you definitely can't make it functional. But at the very least, you have a lot of control over how every single building looks. And how all the pavements and general street designs look. So I think it would be really interesting to mess around with this kind of thing. You know, even if it's not my most popular series, and if it's way different from my usual content, it is something that I'm kind of interested in. Uh, also that little spire in the end, that, that'll be the uh, the lightning rod for the building. I'll be also adding one on the smaller building, I think I just did that actually. And then there are some other functional touches like these HVACs on the top for instance. And this is also really the kind of thing that I am really curious for the studio update for, since they're adding a studio update, which kind of brings me the idea that they're gonna add some kind of walls and wall pieces, uh, like HVACs or other elements, to make those like studio-esque buildings, which I'm really hoping for, and that would definitely, you know, give us way more options for these kind of HVAC behind-the-scenes parts of buildings. Which, if I remember, how excited everyone was back in the alpha days to just get a few of these like air conditioning units and stuff like that. I think it'd be amazing to see more stuff in this kind of vein in the next update as well. And I'm actually kind of surprised that I'm still adding stuff to the top of the building. 
At some point, I was th I was thinking there wasn't really enough interesting stuff going on on the top of the building, so I decided to kind of redo that part a little bit, have have it a little bit more detail in there, and um, I also made the balconies have that sort of black pattern across the whole building. It's something kind of simple, but I thought it would add a little bit more interesting detailing to the building. One thing which I don't usually like is if every single floor on a building looks exactly the same. So I prefer when there's at, little bit, at least a little bit of detailing or slight variations added to every single floor. So in this case I went with the black balconies, but in the case of the other tower, the uh, balconies jut out a little bit more uh, the more you go up the tower. I should, I should stop hitting my pop filter. You probably hear that. In any case, uh, you know, I'm glad to have a pop filter again, glad to be back home and not have to talk to a dirty sock anymore, so at least we've got that. Uh, in any case, gotta work on the foundations of the building now, and there was a really <laughs> interesting discussion going on in the comment section of the last video, since I told everyone, you know, I don't really know the English word for this kind of thing, there's a Dutch word that typically describes it, but um, then I kind of asked for like, you know, what's the English word for this actually, because I had no idea. Turns out that there's not really an English word with the direct translation and the same meaning um, as the blint in Dutch, which kind of makes sense. Uh, usually when it comes to language, you never really have a direct translation with the exact same connotations. But what I thought was probably the most fitting for what I'm trying to do here uh, is probably the word podium. I don't remember if anybody else uh, said this in the comments as well, but I remember uh, Dr. Beekman said it, so thanks Dr. Beekman for giving that suggestion. I think podium is more or less what I'm looking for. I know some people do use the word plinth as well in English, but uh, I believe more commonly in English that's associated with the, the real bottom of a floor, like really the lower part or foundation of a building, or even or of pillars or any architectural elements and not necessarily of a, an entire building, the lower floors. And I think the lobby as well kind of misses the meaning since that's usually just the first floor, just the entrance area. And in this case, I really mean a low rise section, which the entire rest of the building is uh, built on basically. And the low, the low rise section also has a little bit of a different style, as you can see here as well, trying to connect it a little bit more with street level. And um, I think it's slightly better. I mean, many people probably agree. It's it's slightly better than having the whole towers in the park approach where you just have towers and these paths behind them and trees everywhere. It's a little bit better to set the tower back a little bit and have a lower section, which translates a little bit more to some regular street architecture and is a little bit more on a human scale. So in this case, I decided to go with a low rise section of four floors and um, Something which is built in a way that it looks like there would be a supermarket or something of that sort in the building. And there we go, that's the addition of the fences. I was actually struggling quite a bit with this building, trying to make it all fit under the 4000 piece limit. Since obviously the tower itself has quite a bit of detailing and it's pretty tall. And it honestly, it took a lot of cutting away at the detailing at the bottom of the tower to actually fit in the 4,000 pieces. That was quite a bit of stuff that I had to do to optimize the amount of pieces. Stuff like this, where I just kind of copied around the pillars around the entire building, but then obviously there's a way to do it with slightly less pillars. And yeah, that's more or less just the way that I, all around the tower, try to cut away the piece count just to make it fit inside a single blueprint. Honestly, this is also one of the reasons why I'm not building these buildings taller. Uh, than I already am. For for one, I don't want to build the buildings too large since then I wouldn't be able to fit much on a planet coaster map, which considering the scale of a real city is also extremely small. And the second thing is just it's hardly possible to make larger buildings since it, it'll be very easy to either go over the 4000 piece count or just have a building that's large but not really detailed and kind of lacks personality. So yeah, this is basically my limits. I'm basically setting my, my roof height limits to about 100 meters. Although if I do build a small city out of it, at least a, a single district, like a business district or something, 
I would like to have one like landmark, one iconic building that sort of towers over the rest and has an actual spire. But that's all just kind of, you know, future plans where I'm not actually sure if they're gonna happen at all. Although it would be great, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the glass in this game and seeing how that's gonna look. So, finally, I obviously can't add an actual supermarket into this building, but I did want some basic level of detailing here, so I'm adding these small windows on the sides which kind of look like they could be maybe, you know, the, the backstage area of the supermarket. Whereas the front of the building itself has a lot of glass, like a, a big entrance would have. And at the back of the building is where ideally the space would be for the trucks to load and unload all of their stuff which uh, the supermarket needs. So that's really the idea behind it. Also I wanted to have a slightly different pattern on the back, just as a little experiment. I do think I prefer the pattern in the front, but it's still fun to kind of mess with these things. It's pretty easy to do but it makes a pretty good impact on how the building looks. And finally, obviously, I wanted to add a few plants to the building, although I couldn't, I couldn't really do much with that, because peace counts. In any case, that's it for this episode, so thank you for watching, and <laughs> I hope to make a next time, in which case, see you next time. <laughs>